Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Grandma and Grandma and Grandpa. Got up and out around seven o'clock this morning. Had the most amazing camping spot last night. So went to bed with an orchestra of croaking frogs last night. Weather is gorgeous in these mountains. We are on our way to Iwakuni, about 60 kilometers away. There is a small town that starts with a Y. About 5Ks from here, we're gonna stop there, load up on food with our credit cards at the convenience store. I'm gonna take this opportunity to make a public service announcement. Everywhere around here is so green and luscious and beautiful. There's trees, 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 trees everywhere, except for right there. That's where they're cutting down trees for lumber. That's where they're deforesting their land. Don't cut down trees. Trees have feelings too. The japancycling.org recommended routes have been awesome so far. For the most part, smooth roads, cycling path slash sidewalk if you want. Beautiful backcountry scenery. The rice fields are so beautiful. It's early rice planting season, so all these look like little tiny sprouts, little troll heads popping out of the ground. But they will grow into full-fledged rice plants. And rice takes a lot of water. As you can see, it's totally swamped out. The combination of the scenery, the motivating comments, the descents, the switchbacks, the gravity pulling us, the amusement park feel of a downhill after climb, 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 the final descent. It just has invigorated us with energy, determination, motivation to keep riding, keep continually making videos, and bringing everyone out there that's watching along for the journey of the bicycle ride through Japan. It just blows me away with the opportunity of today's technology that anyone, anywhere, thousands or tens of thousands of miles away can just open up their computer, log on, and experience what we're experiencing to bring it to people that might never have thought of doing something like this or inspiring somebody to eventually plan their own trip or to bring someone that isn't physically able to do something like this, bring them on this trip to the best of our video recording abilities. Thank you everybody that's been watching this it actually means a lot to us. Just saw another monkey. It ran, it ran down across the street into this bush over here. They do not want human contact. They're just so skittish and afraid. It was a smaller monkey than yesterday. Fourth Japanese monkey I've seen. It's been beautiful mountain roads for like 90K from Suwano all the way to Iwakuni. This is like the most amazing section we've done so far. I'm so pumped right now. We've been out of cash for days. Finally made it to a 7-Eleven. Gonna pull out some cash. Welcome. Construction bunnies. Just got done with a, it was about a 60K ride, I think. We did it in a little over three hours of actual ride time. Today has been our most productive riding day, I feel like, because we're already at our next destination. A at least a half a day left. What is the time? It's like noon. We're actually about to eat some lunch underneath Five Arch Wooden Bridge, which I'll show you guys after we eat lunch, but we're gonna chill here. We got shade underneath the bridge right now, like Western bums. We're gonna cook up some noodles, get some fuel in our body so we can show everyone the bridge. That seems to be the popular thing in Japan is instant coffee. These buns we've been eating like crazy. They're only 100 yen. I got my udon noodles with some curry. These are good. This is Cody's favorite snack. So the deal with these things is they're easily packable. They're cheap. I think this was like 120 yen, which is like a little over a dollar. And they are delicious. It unpacks like that. And then there's a little bit of seaweed. You split it. Grab it by the seaweed, roll it, wrap it, and then you eat it. It's probably like a dollar fifty right there, and it's tasty. So we're in the city of Iwakuni, and we're gonna be hanging here, I think, for at least the rest of today. And apart from the actual wooden bridge, there's like a whole bunch of parks out here. People just playing baseball and riding their bikes, walking with family. There, it's just a whole developed tourism area. This area is centered kind of around the Kintai Bridge, but there's so much other stuff. There's art museums. There's like birds over there. Cody found a resting room where we're gonna charge the computers and work on a video. Bridge is that direction. 
birds over here. I don't know why. The homeboy keeps smacking into the water really loud. I think he's just celebrating how happy he is to be in Japan. They have little art displays. They have beautiful fountains. Splash parks for the kiddos. This bathroom by the restroom that we are staying at is so clean. This is like the cleanest bathroom. Other than that cup that somebody just put there, everything else, it seems like it's brand spanking new. Everything's shiny. They got the Toto washlet with all full function features. The bathroom is definitely on point here. So this is like a traditional type of Japanese fishing. That would have PETA squirming. So they actually use those birds to catch fish. They tie up the coromance with line, James and the Giant Peach style. The birds go down and catch fish. They light the boat up at night with fire to scare the fish or get them moving. The birds catch the fish. They pull the birds and rip the fish out of their mouth before they could swallow it. And that's how they fish. That is so awesome. It's a Japanese tradition that would have animal rights activists in the States squirming in their chairs. English subtitles. See, this is the kind of stuff us English speakers like. Pictures, explanations in English, and then something that's very Japanese, very traditional, something that we've never seen before. This kind of fishing is called ukai. That is U-K-A-I, ukai fishing. We just stepped foot on the Kintai Bridge. This bridge was originally made in the 1600s and then it was taken away by a big flood. It was built with this design with these stone pillars instead of just like a flat bridge because it kept getting washed out from floods. It consists of five separate wooden bridges spanning the 200 meters across the river. So even back in the 1600s when Japanese people wanted to cross rivers, they didn't want their feet to get wet so they built bridges. Oh, she's biting me. Oh. <laughs> Parked our bikes on that side over there. We're gonna wade the water to get to the other side. Actually really slippery. The chances that I slip, fall, and lose my camera gear and drone is actually pretty high. We gotta get all the way over there. We're, this bridge is meant to get people across the river from getting wet. We're totally going against bridge logic. One step at a time, wide base, keep your balance. Thousands of dollars worth of camera gear. We got this. People on the bridge are laughing at us because they built this bridge to avoid this exact reason. It's good that we walked out here because now we get a different angle of the bridge and a different light for different shots. <laughs> Is the camera? Oh, no, no, no! Cody's camera just got saturated. What happened? Oh no, you're right. <laughs> no, 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 no! Take the battery out. Take the battery out, quick. Take the battery out. Oh! Put it in your bag. Cody wasn't going slow enough. Kangaroo balance. I think like five people have taken pictures of us. All right, so Cody lost two pieces of camera equipment so far. He needs to start a GoFundMe. Oh, there's a bunch of little fish over there. I managed to safely wade the entire river. Hopefully it'll dry out. It'll take time, like maybe a day. And that is where we are sleeping tonight. This big, beautiful awning. And there's a cat trying to capture our domain. Meow. Later. Boom, snack of the day. Today's snack of the day is brought to you by Fanta Kiwi Plus E. I got it because my name's Eric, starts with an E. I like Kiwis and Fanta's usually pretty good soda. Fanta is owned by Coke. It's like their Asian fruity sister company. E vitamins or what, but this was like a dollar 30 from a 7-Eleven. It was cold when I got it, but the lighting was bad and I didn't want to do snack of the day then. I'm gonna do it now, so hopefully this didn't shake up too much in my bike. It smells like fruit for sure, but definitely does not smell specifically like kiwi. Maybe I would think it was like strawberry but let's dig into this. I'm not much of a soda drinker. Right now, it doesn't taste like anything special. 
it's not hot out and this is not cold. This is actually like a pretty warm, it's probably like 80 something degrees. It's been in my bag all day, maybe on a hot summer day. I don't think I'm gonna get it again. Snack of the day was a failure. Let me know if you've tried any weird sodas in any other countries. If you haven't already, give the video a thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button and I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye. I just walked down to the river just to see what it would be like at night and it is amazing. They have all these lanterns lined up all along the seaside. The actual bridge itself is lit up as well, phenomenal.